Hello, is it the Jaden Show you're looking for? Welcome to the Jaden Show. It's Sunday. I am Jaden Cornelius, and have I got a show for you? Yes, I have. I'm going all the way to the USA today to meet singer, songwriter, phenomenal musician, the amazing Aaron Lettinen. He's going to tell you all about himself all about his music and what he's up to in just a few moments. So I like to keep you waiting a little bit, get those juices flowing before you actually get to hear from the man himself. So I think we need to go and check out one of his videos. This is called... Dun, 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 dun. I want out of life. This is Aaron Lettinen, everybody. <laughs> amazing was that now we're gonna go and chat to aaron in just a couple of moments but first a commercial break hey guys i wanted to take this opportunity to let you know about the Jaden show commercial break starting now this is amazing news because now every single week you have a couple of minutes to be able to advertise something you want to advertise. So if you have a business, if you have an event coming up, if you have a new album, a, a art gallery or anything you want to particularly advertise on a show, this is your chance to do it. March and April 2024, the advertisements are free. So please let me know. Get in touch to me on Jaden Cornelius at AOL.com. It will be wonderful to hear from you. If you are a charity or a charitable organization or a nonprofit and you are advertising something with regards to that, then always your advertising is free. So let me know. You will need to send me a between a one and two minute video around that time, if possible, um, something that you want to advertise and I will fit it into this spot. Get on. I'll see you soon. Take care. Let's go and meet this week's incredibly super special guest, the amazing Aaron Lettman, everybody. Aaron Lettman, welcome to the... Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's a bloody pleasure. How are you, sir? I am doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm absolutely... Excellent. You're in Boston, USA. I am. Fantastic. And you had snow. Yeah, just today. A little bit of flurry, nothing to stick. <laughs> but, yeah, you kind of think that it should be over by now, really. I do completely. It's, it's really spring. hard for me to imagine other people 
getting snow when I'm in nearly 40 degrees and sweating like a bullfrog in a microwave. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'll switch. Okay, <laughs> mate, I'm so up for that. <laughs> so tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself, kind of your music, how you got into it. Oh, uh, I've been playing since I was a wee lad. Uh, you know, I got the Mickey Mouse guitar when I was yeah. just a little kid and just been strumming away ever since. Sweet, man. Uh, yeah. When you I, started uh, as a little kid, what, like four or five years old? Like how little? Abs was yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Well, your family. My father played. All oh, right. That's what I was going to ask. My father played guitar as well. Uh, not so much, but he he had one around the house. So mm. I, was, um, I heard what was it. Your, what was your listening kind of genre at the time what was you into as that when you're playing well, you know being, inspired being by that people. age i'm into whatever everybody else is listening to <laughs> around me so you know it'd be the doors and you know 60s 70s rock wow. for the most part uh you know playing on a little keyboard in the basement and you know basically listening to what the adults were listening to floyd <laughs> wow so you've always been musical yeah absolutely Absolutely. So when did it go from kind of like, you know, tinkling on the piano in the basement and, you know, doing a few chords on the guitar to like, what were your school years like? Were you getting it more heavy and he heavier into music or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've always been in it. So um, I grew up in a tiny town of uh, New Ipswich and uh, probably around 10 12 ish i moved to jaffrey which is a tiny little town but seemed like a city to me really? and uh and met some other people who were more into music and so we formed a little band and uh you know made some songs and i think we, that band was called like the night stalkers or something silly and uh <laughs> and uh just you know had had a bunch of songs with them and just been in bands and solo and everything ever since wow that's amazing man so yeah. were you actually writing your own music as well or were you just kind of listening no to abs all what, original at 10 yeah. and 12 years old absolutely yeah yeah i hell, think man. i think i still have a a couple of tape recordings of that kind of stuff <laughs> that's amazing oh my god i was still prancing around the front room listening to olivia newton john at the time mate i had no <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew I wanted to be a singer, but that was kind of it. It was the mirror. <laughs> that was kind yeah. of wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Like yeah, when I was when I was a little older, my father actually bought me a, a PA. You know, two speakers and a microphone from I think it was Radio Shack, a realistic set. And I was like, wow, thanks. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna go jam. <laughs> That's crazy, man. So when did, so you used to, was you even doing like live performances at 10 years old? Um, you know, it was, it was more garage based, but oh. you know, by the time I think probably 15, I was making recordings. Wow. So, so how old are you yeah. now? If you don't mind me asking, they say you should never ask a singer his age. But... <laughs> 50. Oh, you. Okay. So we're about the same. Yeah. Well, 1973. I'm a 73, but okay, so your my birthday's gone, so yours is to come then. Uh, June. Cancerian. Okay, that's cool. Yep, June 24th, yep. Day after my mother's birthday, how bizarre. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, March 7, 73. That was nice. Me. So, okay. Nice. Both the same age. Good year. Lot yeah, good year. That year, apparently. <laughs> the best. That's amazing, man. So, <laughs> How was it? Were you like the cool kid at school because you were like you was in a rock band and were you, were, was your peer group really into what you was doing? And uh, there was there was a couple of shows that you know we we tried to put on at the school, which you know helps. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> school, uh, you know, when they caught me, I'd go. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't too what? into it. But your friends in school thought you were pretty cool because of it. Well, I mean, there's always yes and there's always no. There's always those jerks. <laughs> but, you know, there's, you know, for the most part, yeah, I got along with basically everybody. Sweet, man. So school's finished. Yeah. You know, 
I don't know, family, are the family putting the pressure on to say, right, we want you to become an accountant or you need to, you know, <laughs> no. um, like, you've got to get out and you've got to play and you've got to do more music. How did it? They, they were always, you know, very easygoing about what I was doing because I was very adamant about it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, uh, my mother, Cecilia, the mother of music, uh, the saint, um was always very helpful with everything i wanted to do Amazing. and my father was a musician so he understood yeah uh, you know and <laughs> lamented because being a musician is not easy <laughs> i'm very little income most of the bloody time uh, yep usually extremely little it, yeah. it costs money it doesn't <laughs> promote most it's of the time insanity at times yeah yeah absolutely. absolutely so you left school so what happened did you go and get a full-time job did you continue with your music what happened after you how did it progress after you well uh i got my general education diploma in the ninth grade and left school um and my father had our uh rna construction it was uh you know construction and painting but and you know for income mm -hmm. but for the most part it was always finding a band uh recording songs and and trying to promote that um i'd say my third or fourth band was named just in case and we recorded in uh sound design studios in brattleboro vermont i'd say it was like one of the more professional recordings we had done uh fish recorded there aerosmith a lot of big bands um with billy shaw and he was he was awesome behind the board and uh i think it cost around 10 grand to record that album an insane amount of songs i think it was like 20 songs that we put on the album and we actually had to whittle those down yeah. <laughs> to to fit them all on the cd uh bygone media uh <laughs> but yeah it, it's always been a a push even even to this day and, and how did that album do it did all right um we got on a couple of um like multimedia um pushes uh some radio some interviews um but we were basically a live band so you know we were partiers so we went and played at all the bars and we played uh you know all around new england and you know uh college shows for the college kids and uh yeah we basically just had a had a blast for a long time mm -hmm. <laughs> i think that band stuck together for i'm gonna say about maybe 10 years or something oh, okay. yeah and what happened after then Did, uh, well it, yeah band, or is that when your kind of your solo work started i've i've always done solo things as as well as being in a band. I mean, I've been in a couple of moments where I've been in a couple of bands because, you know, I, I play guitar, I sing, I can play bass. Yeah. Uh, so I just, you know, join up with whoever's doing whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's always been, and you know, people just go their separate ways and, you know, um, what's that now? And life just happens. <laughs> it does. It does. I mean, and quickly. Like yeah yeah sometimes <laughs> yeah and but, yeah. were your listening choices still the same were you still into your rock i mean the stuff that you was listening to as a kid was that kind of running through the history of your career as your career was growing or was it changing oh no in an no i've i've played and 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 sang everything yeah. um i think at this point i might have around 30 albums of things i've written amazing um and it it goes from new age to heavy metal to rock and roll just just you know i've even i've even played with country <laughs> so mm -hmm. it it spans absolutely everything uh, whatever hits me if you had a if, what what is the the genre that kind of i don't know like inspires you wants you to you know that kind of really well yeah. If I'm going to throw down money and go to a concert, it was usually uh, heavy metal. Uh, I've seen Pantera a whole bunch uh, while they were still around. Uh, when I was young, 
I think my first concert was like Anthrax, Exodus, and Halloween. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, got the bright new jams and got out there and moshed with everybody. Uh, so that's kind of the the genre that inspires. But, you know, whatever hits me and however I'm feeling, that's usually what I go ahead and write. Your your solo stuff that you're promoting at the moment, is that yeah. is that to appeal to a specific audience? Does that have a specific... I mean, could you pigeonhole that sound if you had to uh well the album i'm working on right now is uh going to be called Catan, um and that's just going to be heavy metal the album that i came out um before this was called stripped down and that album cover was a bit of a mistake because now it's my profile picture for almost everything. And I'm just posing with my guitar in front of me and nothing else on. And uh, now everybody uses that picture. I'm like, ah, that's not what I intended it for, but it's called stripped down and it's nothing but me and an acoustic playing, you know, and it's, it's like a, maybe an Americana. I get, I guess I'd have to call it. Yeah. 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 Seven or eight songs are just me sitting in the living room and, strumming away <laughs> your thing. and yep. do you have, i mean are your are your fans and your supporters quite flexible with you are, are, do you get like the same supporters as like acoustic guitar would they still support your heavy metal stuff that you're doing or do you have like do you reach yeah it, it's really all over the place uh really? um you know some people are like oh i really like that and some people are like oh i really like that but you know for the most part um people like what they like and and I'm just here to be the conduit and put it on tape. Sweet. If that's what they do these days. Tape, digital, something. Real to real. <laughs> I mean, you're still not doing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, you know, whatever. I can't really. Um, I can write specifically. Um, a guy just asked me to put vocals on a. Uh, a dance tune, I guess we'd call it, because it's got the... <laughs> so I was like, because he wrote to me, and then his name was like Dark Something, and the name was, uh, the main name of the tune was Hollow. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And then he sent it to me, and I'm like, that's a dance tune. And this is going to be interesting. So, you know, I sat down, put the headphones on, wrote some words. He wanted uh, three different vocal tracks, uh, all dry, no effects on them so i sent them to him and that's you know my latest work and was it fun for that yeah i i i totally enjoy doing so you know, whatever stuff. whoever wants to work the tune before that was um like a hard rock tune um from these australian cats that sent me one through um one of the media sites that i was on they're like hey can you put vocals on this it's like absolutely and then it was like I think it was like three months later, I was like, oh, I'm supposed to do that tune. <laughs> so I like sat down and wrote vocals for it. And then I was like, I was singing it and practicing it. And then I recorded one line of it. And then I clicked over and I realized they had written words for it. And I'm like, oh. really? So I erased everything that I had written and, and then sang it for them and sent them their vocals. So, oh, man. yeah. And I also have a show um, called Aaron At. Uh, where I just show up uh, with whoever I meet and uh, we just, you know, practice a tune and go live on Facebook and, and play that tune. And thank yeah. you very much. Shut it down. <laughs> so what does the future hold for you? How do you, how is this going to progress for you? What are your dreams and your aspirations? And well, I mean, uh, to be as large as this world lets me get, uh, of course, but, um, you know, doing music all the time with, whoever is is really the dream you know um it doesn't really matter the genre for me so much yeah uh, I, I, you know it could be uh maybe heavy metal maybe mariachi in the sand who knows it doesn't wow. really matter to me that's not a bad video <laughs> though mate to be fair <laughs> that's true that's a good location song yeah <laughs> that's really cool man yeah for this point um I've been trying to catalog all the albums that I have um, so I can get everything solidified so I can move on. Um, 
but it's it's going pretty well. So have you released all 30 albums? No, I think I've probably only released mm, 12, I want to say, at this oh, point. Okay. Uh, and all different genres in that as well, too. Uh, rock, metal. Um, <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote one um, called Summer Rain, and it's just a new age with like an African thumb piano and, and rain in the background. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> just so far what the genre i mean like you're a metal boy and and that's your yeah, passion but it is you're like oh shit the new age went really well wasn't expecting <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's taken off yeah hey, shit, whatever works a million views <laughs> and my heavy metal's got six like damn i don't want to be known as that yeah, time to break out that happen. African thumb piano again. Yeah, there we go again. <laughs> hey, whatever works, I don't mind. <laughs> no, so, but, but do you have like? I mean, did what has been the most popular kind of genre for you at the moment that you're kind of? Playing? I would say the rock stuff. Okay, has been yeah. What what people really like and still listen to. I mean, I think it, I think that album came out in '95 or something like that. Yeah. And and people still comment on it. They're like, "Wow, that's that's a really good album." You know, it sounds like it was just written the other day. Like, well, that's cool. Maybe it was just before its time. Yeah, <laughs> pioneer of new sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> Maybe we could pay back that ten grand now. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so when you sit back, do you still listen to the same music you listen to? Have your listening, your chilling out stuff been quite constant for you? Or as your music has changed and you've changed, do you listen to just like a whole plethora of like different artists and style now? I I absolutely listen to, you know, everything I can get my hands on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I just started, you know, maybe a couple of years ago listening to Post Malone, you know, because okay. <laughs> I was like, well, that's kind of cool, you know, and uh, the Beyonce just came out with the new country album. I oh, gave yeah. that a listen, uh, it- you know, because oh, yeah. everybody's like up in arms because she made a country album. I'm like she's from Texas. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to write a country album. But, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of music, um, you know, I don't I don't really lean one way or the other. But if a new metal album comes out. I'm probably going to listen to it. What, yeah. what would you say is the most random music you have on your playlists of stuff oh, you listen man. to? Oh, it, it's all random. Like, oh, really? All of it? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, God, geez, I don't know. Well, just everything. You know, I've got, really? you know, I'd like to say uh, Anthrax to Zappa. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite broad it's, it's everywhere. You know, I... I've been um, listening to YouTube videos of uh, classical music. Um, if I'm, you know, just reading, there's this uh, dark classical ambient music that I listen to. But if I'm driving real fast in the old Mustang convertible, it's probably going to be, you know, the serious XM heavy metal sure. devil's dozen top 10. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely everything. What would you say has been the highlight of your career? I'm a bit apart from this show, obviously. What would you say has been the highlight <laughs> oh, this of your it. career? This is the pinnacle. Hey, you, well, at least you can only go up from here. Let's be honest. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm only down. <laughs> <laughs> so what has um, been the thing that thought, shit, man, that's about me. I've just achieved that or I've just done this or what you said? Yeah, the, uh, the, the recording of Just In Case was really pretty cool. Um but there's been a lot of live live shows that are just you know pretty incredible when you when you get the reaction from the crowd and you know and it's cool with it when it's just me and it's an acoustic and everybody's like that's pretty good you know but when it's like a metal show and people are screaming that's uh that gets you (laughs) so have a preference between studio boy or live performance boy or do they both uh, things or would you like the studio bores me shitless get me on that stage or is it the other way oh really yeah yeah it it, it really is uh if it's music it's pretty enjoyable 
uh, I like the live and, you know, I also like the, um, the studio where you can, you know, really mess with sounds. And, uh, when I started, it was a tape and a four track. So, you know, I'd have to bounce down and bounce down. Mm. And now it's just like on my computer, I can have a thousand tracks and, and with the internet, I can collaborate with anybody. So it is quite <laughs> quite amazing to do it in the studio yeah, as well. it's crazy how quickly i mean even when i started seeing people there with like a roll of scotch tape and a big ass reel to reel cut yep. it, it. Yeah. that was like yeah i just think that how yeah. the hell did they you know like what we can do is like put four part harmonies and all that. how the hell did they even do that and and how expensive was it you know the yeah. two inch reel to reel well that that tapes about uh 30 bucks for about that much yeah. <laughs> you better get it right <laughs> yeah and these ones were like this in the studios that we yeah were. and they're like, spinning yeah no crazy yeah. Yeah. absolutely absolutely but yeah um i i love the i love the you know emotion of live shows but i also love hiding away in the studio and yeah the creation the music. Of it, right yeah absolutely yeah absolutely Oh, absolutely man. so i've heard that you get about a bit on social media i do <laughs> i uh so I, I, can... I, I spam <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you on social media platforms oh everywhere absolutely everywhere instagram uh facebook like i said my aaron at show has been mostly uh you know i find another musician who wants to play and i either invite them into the studio or I go to where they are. And I kind of prefer to go to where they are because it's a different background. It's a different sound. It's a different yeah. feeling. Yeah. And uh, that's live on Facebook. Um, you know, I, I usually try and, you know, send out the notifications, you know, a couple hours before it goes live to let people know where I am, who I'm with, what we'll be doing. So, yeah. And, uh, and that's, pretty interesting but yeah i'm everywhere i'm on tiktok i'm on you know facebook i'm on instagram i'm everywhere <laughs> reverb nation yeah and your and your music yeah. downloadable in pretty much all the major oh yeah apple itunes um yeah uh, everywhere everywhere <laughs> amazon best, best word people can't there's no excuse then is it they know where no nope. no excuse they should be able to find me just if they can spell my last name if they can spell my last name they can find me l-e-h-t-o-n-e-n that's correct nice i might job but i ain't thank you so much for being part of my show you're oh absolutely i wish you ultimate success in everything you're doing people at home go and check this brother out all you have put his name in a google search bar and a plethora of information appears for you to go and follow him. So make sure you've done that by the time you've made yourself a cup of tea and had some <laughs> at the end of this show. Aaron, I hope you'll come back at some point as well. And we I would love to. Absolutely. Especially when Catan comes out as well. Let's have another show and chat about it. Have you got a release date set for it or? No, not really. I'm, I'm hoping within happens. the next couple of months. Okay. So it kind of happens when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay well let's talk about that when it comes out and i'm you know, looking forward to hearing it thank you this was great thank you mate have a wonderful have a wonderful new week because it's sunday now have a wonderful new week and we will catch up again soon absolutely i'll see, see you then thank you Take care. bye 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 what a cool a bloody talented man i don't know you need to go and follow him you've listened to him You've heard his music. You've got to know him. He is everywhere on social media platforms and is on every single music streaming and downloading platform as well. So, I mean, like, there's no excuse. So, like I said, before you make that cup of tea after this show, just quickly go straight onto your Google search, put Aaron Lettinen in, find him wherever he is. You'll also would have seen the links going throughout the video at the bottom of the screen and on the credits at the end of this video. So there really is no excuse. <laughs> go and show brothers some love and support. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Jaden Show. It's been a pleasure to spend some more time with you. I really do love my Sundays hanging out with you and introducing you to lovely people. Please 
please do not forget to subscribe to tell your friends your family your neighbors your enemies everyone to subscribe to this channel and you'll get to meet some more wonderful people as the weeks go on you can also check back to the last 130 140 odd shows where there's been some phenomenal people um profiled as well so please feel free to check it all out it'll be wonderful especially if you're bored if you've got a bit of tonsil uh you know the last airbender is kind of is, you finish series one on netflix and thinking what shall i watch now the Jaden show that's what you need to be watching go to the first episode see how it's changed see who you can meet and enjoy and while you're there, don't forget to put into the back of your brain that I'm going to be here again next Sunday with another wonderful person. So make sure you have subscribed and make sure you've liked, make sure the tinkly bell is rung and you'll get a notification when my next episode comes out next Sunday. Have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Please stay beautiful. And I'll see you next week on The Jaden Show. Take care. I'm going to leave you actually with another song by the amazing AL. This is called My Own Path. Enjoy. See you soon. Bye-bye.